I get it. Cooking scallops can be incredibly challenging, but I promise you, if you follow the procedures in this video, you are gonna get beautiful, perfect scallops every single time. You are gonna love this recipe. One of the biggest requests I get on my channel or my website in general is how to best prepare seafood. I get it, it can be intimidating, it is definitely challenging. I wanna build on everything I've taught you to this point but cooking scallops are a little bit different than cooking any other seafood. But I do want to pair it up with a tasty herb butter. You know I love herb butter. So we are going to start off by knocking out the prep for that. Sound good? Let's cook. In Chef Billy Parisi fashion, we are going to prep up an onion and specifically a small shallot. So remove the ends of that shallot, slice it in half, and then of course, as always, peel off that outside layer. Now we're only going to use half of the shallot. That's all we're going to need for our butter and then simply small dice it and definitely take the time to do this. Make sure it's small dice or else you're gonna get a big bite of raw shallot when you eat this butter. Set it to the side in a bowl and then what I'm gonna do is run a few garlic cloves through a garlic press and we're gonna be doing it right into the bowl with the shallots. In fact, we're gonna put most of our prep in just one bowl. Once everything is in there, we're next going to finely mince up some chives. Again, make sure these are very, very small bite-sized pieces. Not that you can't get a big chunk of chive when eating the butter, but just for consistency's sake. And then I've got a few sprigs of fresh chive. Just roll in that outside and then finely mince it again. There is so much flavor in the stems of thyme. Do not throw those away. I was always taught that and it's so true. Just try a stem yourself. Make sure it's finely minced though or else it's going to be woody and tough to chew. And next I've got some Italian flat leaf parsley. What I'm going to do is roll it up in a little ball, kind of fold it over. This is just easier for me to hold it and plus it kind of compacts it so when I slice through I'm actually slicing quite a bit. It's not just one leaf at a time. But the trick here is to finely mince it. However you do that, whether you're chopping or using rocking motions, it's totally up to you. We're also gonna save a little bit to the side because we're gonna garnish with it at the end. Again, add it to that exact same bowl. Now grab that bowl, we're gonna bring it over to the cutting board because I've got a lemon and I've got a fine zester, also known as a microplane. These are fantastic. You should definitely own one of these. Great, great to zest lemons or even finely grate garlic. So what you wanna do is run that lemon back and forth, getting all of that outside rind through the zester. It's gonna have so much flavor in there. Be sure to give it a few knocks at the end just to get all of the zest off there. Sometimes it sort of stays underneath in that microplane. Now slice that lemon in half and we are gonna juice both halves. And I like to hold my hand in one side to sort of catch any of the seeds from going in there. I don't wanna go fishing right now. Just like you can see here, the juice runs through in between my fingers and I can just simply discard the seeds, no problem. If you also have a press for lemons, feel free to use that as well. Set the juice to the side. And now in a stand mixer, I'm gonna add in some softened unsalted butter. Remember, always unsalted because I want to control the salt content. We are gonna add on the paddle attachment, lock it in place. We are gonna mix it on medium speed. It's gonna take maybe four, five, six minutes. We wanna make it light, we wanna make it fluffy. It's also important to come back maybe after two or three minutes and scrape down the sides with a rubber spatula. Make sure all that butter is getting beaten by that paddle attachment. Of course, if you don't have a stand mixer, you can absolutely use a hand mixer with a whip. Now we're gonna add in our lemon juice and then we're just going to mix that in for a minute or two. Want to incorporate it right into that butter. And then of course, that bowl of all of our herbs and shells and garlic prep. Go ahead and add all that goodness in there. I'm gonna use, again, a rubber spatula just to make sure I get every little morsel into that stand mixer. Now we want to season it well with salt and pepper. This butter should be extremely flavorful. So be sure that there is plenty of seasoning in there. And again, just to make sure all those herbs are in there and the garlic and shallots, use a rubber spatula, scrape down the sides of the bowl. Be sure to get that paddle attachment too. There's lots of goodness always hanging out on there. So scrape it all in there and then just really give it another 30 seconds to 45 seconds to incorporate everything. Once it is mixed in, just remove it from the stand mixer and set it to the side. And at this point, we are gonna bring out our beautiful fresh scallops. These are U12 scallops, which means it takes up to 12 to make one pound. Any size smaller or bigger than this will absolutely work for this recipe. 
Now, in most cases, fresh scallops will come with the main abductor muscle attached, which is also known as the foot, which you'll see right here, and I'll point it out, this little guy right here. It can get tough and chewy, so it's always advised just to remove it. I don't know. Some people like to leave it on there. For me, I like to take it off. Feel free to do what you'd like there. And then simply go around to all of the scallops and remove the feet or the foot on each one. Some of them may have them. Some of them may already be removed. But again, I like to pull her off there. And it pulls off with ease. There's no tugging or anything like that. It's not a hard thing to do. And then because scallops can have a lot of moisture in them, I like to pat them down on paper towels. So just transfer them over to a couple of paper towels and then grab some more paper towels and put them over top. And then what we really want to do is just sort of press them down. Get all of the moisture out that you possibly can. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just going to help in the browning process. No oil is going to be popping out because there's leaking water from our scallops. Again, it's just going to help in the browning. We're going to put them back on the plate because what we want to do at this point is season them on both sides with salt and pepper. This is incredibly important. Scallops have unique flavor and the salt and pepper will absolutely enhance the flavor of these. Let's go ahead and head to the cooktop. Okay, before we start cooking this, I wanna give you two options. You can either cook it in a stainless steel pan or a cast iron, I've done both. Now I will say, if you are a little bit more experienced cook, absolutely cook this up in a cast iron skillet. I've already done this before on my website. And the reason I say that is because cooking with cast iron can be a little tricky. When it gets hot, it stays hot. When you need to cool it down, it doesn't cool off quite as quick as you may need it. So since I've already done cast iron on my website, I'm going to show you how to do it in stainless steel. Here we go. In a large stainless steel skillet, I'm going to add in some oil. I'm using safflower oil here. We are going to immediately crank the heat on to high. Now, once this begins to smoke, get a nice rolling smoke off that pan. It needs to be smoking hot. Can't say smoking up. And then as quickly as you can, add in our scallops. Be sure to space them out. We want to steam them, not sear them. Immediately turn the heat down to medium high and then begin to add in some unsalted butter. This is going to help brown them. This is going to help add flavor. It's a little bit of fat. This is a great addition. Now it's only going to cook for maybe 90 seconds to two minutes. That's it. Maybe 90 seconds. Honestly, you got to keep an eye on it depending on how hot your burner is. See that beautiful golden brown? We're just going to flip them over. They look absolutely perfect. I like to move them around, make sure they're not sticking. But also, if you remember my technique video in Steak Au Poivre on how to sear the steak to make sure they're brown on all sides, it's the exact same technique here. After they're flipped, you're talking maybe another 30 to 45 seconds to cook them. That's it. So set them to the side on a plate. We are now going to drain off a lot of that fat and a lot of that scallop juice in the pan to the side. But a few of those little tidbits on the bottom of the pan, totally fine because we're gonna hit it with some white wine. I have some Chardonnay here. You are gonna get quite a bit of steam here because remember that pan was smoking hot on high heat. We are gonna turn the heat down a little bit to about medium. And what we wanna do is cook this to au sec or almost gone. So there'll be about one tablespoon or so of white wine left in the pan once it is done reducing. Now let's grab it, go over to the cooktop. I've got a little marble slab here. I'm gonna set it on top so it doesn't hurt my countertop. Add in some of that delicious herb butter. Obviously there's tons of herb butter left. It freezes fantastically and goes amazing in pastas, vegetables, you name it. Now grab that whisk and whisk that butter until it's melted and it's nice and thick. Essentially what you are doing at this point is making an herb blanc sauce. You can see how it's nice and thick. It is not broken. That's because it's nice and cool on that marble slab. We are getting one step closer to tasting this. Yeah, go ahead and wait and see how long you can wait until you start scooping these directly into your mouth when they're finished cooking. The flavors are so good. The herb butter, oh my gosh, to die for. And I tell you all the time to my Comies, to my chefs in training out there, it is all about putting these fundamental basic cooking techniques into practice, knowing how long to cook those scallops, making sure your oil is super hot, using the butter to provide more fat, to provide extra browning, all of these things, putting them into practice into your everyday cooking. My promise to you is, and it is always true, that your homemade food from scratch will always taste better when using these techniques. Now, I cannot wait to get into these, so let's plate up in slow-mo. I'm just going to transfer my scallops to a nicer serving platter. It just looks a little better than that one plate I was doing. 
Be sure, though, to grab all the juices on that plate where the scallops were originally imported on. There's so much flavor there. And then for that butter sauce, this stuff is gold, my friends. It is so dang good. Go ahead and generously pour it all over. And then using an old school zester, I'm just going to zest on some lemon. It's just so good and so colorful. I don't know. All lemon flavors are good. I'm going to add on for a few more chopped herbs that we set aside. And my oh my, check out this beauty. Yep, don't even care. There's already a few missing because I've eaten them. Be sure to check out this video right here because I made it just for you. See you on there.